Hi, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and this is Florida Natural Farming. Today I'm going to do a video on cacao. Uh, the fruit's ripening. I'm probably also going to look at Cherry of the Rio Grande and some mulberries. I'm out here with my, our miniature Zebu cows. This is my little cow, Boga Farms Uma Pepsi. That's her little baby, little heifer calf. She's uh, about a week old. She's so cute. Come here, little peanut. Color peanut. She's very cute. She's a paint, like a red and white, uh, speckled white paint. What are you eating, hey? Oh, she's going to the bathroom. There's her little sister, her big sister, Tiny Bubbles. She's a month old Wednesday. Uh, they're about the same size. It's uh, Luna. My cow Pepsi is so sweet, and her little baby is just like her. She's just so friendly and sweet. She lets me pretty much do whatever I want. And her child is just like her. Come here, Peanut. It's very cute. Bubbles is cute too. What do you got in your mouth? Sticks and weeds? Anyway. <clears throat> Luna's a little more squirrely. She does let Brian milk her, but I can't really get uh, milk out of her. But she's a, she's a good looking cow. She's much more nervous than Pepsi. For some reason, they're both raised by their mothers. They have completely different personalities and their babies are pretty much just like them. So Pepsi's baby lets me uh, touch her and pet her and scratch her and Luna's baby doesn't. So she will, they'll be very tame. Uh, so we're cleaning out the barn. This is our daily manure. Uh, we clean out the barn. We put hay in there at night cause we lock them in at night. And the cows have been kept in for a while. So the mangoes are doing very good. This is the fruit punch mango that's just starting its fourth bloom. Uh, it's got a nice uh, all over bloom on it, pretty much. So uh, the lychees are doing quite well. This is a Venus mango that is on its fourth bloom also. It's gonna be a good mango year. We've got lots of mangoes uh, and obviously lots of lychees on our trees. We have about 34 lychee trees. Brewster and Mauritius. I thought about getting sweet tart, but with all the trouble people have with lychees and Aranos mite, I just figured I don't wanna take the chance of uh, introducing a, uh, a insect here that could wipe out the lychee trees we have that are blooming well and fruiting well that don't have any disease issues. This one has a lot of fruit on it also. This is a Thai sweet pink tamarind that the squirrels got almost all the fruit off of. Um, it's uh, doing well. There's a couple fruit left on the tree. Thank you, squirrels. It's a coconut cream mango that's just starting to rebloom. because it didn't set fruit during the cold, but it's giving us a big rebloom. I think this is a Venus mango, but it could be a coconut cream, but I'm pretty sure it's a Venus mango and it's doing a complete rebloom. Hasn't opened up yet, but it's quite good. Back there is a Super Julie tree. Look at the jackfruit on this tree. This is a seedling jackfruit that's just covered in fruit. Covered. All the way up. Uh, it's a Super Julie tree doing a rebloom. <clears throat> it's a buttercream doing a rebloom. Gonna work my way over to the cacao, but on the way I'm gonna look at these mangoes. It's a, a uh, honey kiss mango. I'm gonna look at the Kwimok tree. 
So this is quite a muck tree as a grafted tree. It's produced fruit for the last three years. This will be its fourth year producing fruit. And it's got a lot of flower on it, but it hasn't really set a lot of fruit. There is some fruit set on it. Uh, in the past, it hasn't really produced a lot of fruit, but we are a young farm. We've only been here eight years. I planted everything here. Uh, so, except for, you know, the big native trees and the big uh, guanacaste tree and the palms and stuff like that. But uh, everything else I planted, this is a, a, a a peach cobbler mango that's completely reblooming. This is a pineapple pleasure that's reblooming. There's a Venus tree that's reblooming, the honey kiss, a fruit punch. There's a, a sweet tart that's all com covered in bloom. Uh, but I'm gonna go over here, work my way over to the cacao. So we grow about a hundred different types of cacao, all naturally farmed. We dry farm our cacao, we dry farm everything. And uh, I'm going to do the cacao video in two parts. So the cacao in the pa the last time our fruit, our little trees set fruit, uh, the creatures got it all, uh, except for one fruit. And I got some seeds out of it, but I'm going to experiment on it and try to pick the fruit just as it's turning yellow. And then in the next video, I'm going to do a video on how I uh, start the seeds in our compost. I used to do it in biodynamic compost, but we're no longer biodynamic certified. So I just make compost the same way. I just don't put the biodynamic preps in it. So this is that mango tree that was covered in powdery mildew. And I said, I'll show you what happens to these mango trees that have powdery mildew and show you that it doesn't affect fruit set. Um, obviously, there's hundreds of little fruits on here uh, that didn't fall off from the powdery mildew. So uh, I, uh, this is why I show this because for some reason, people think that powdery mildew Maybe in an industrial type farm situation where you've killed the biology in the soil, but we focus on soil health here. We're a regenerative farm. We were biodynamic certified, organic certified. We no longer are, though we still follow the same uh, holistic uh, uh, farm, biodynamic farm standards, except we don't do the preps. I, uh, I just, I just, I, I don't feel the need to do the uh, 500 horn every year, and I don't feel the need. To, I never saw any difference in the compost with the biodynamic uh, preps. There's nothing against biodynamic. It's just that for me, I didn't feel the need to purchase those preps when they're supposed to, with their whole uh, concept is to do a closed loop system. Uh, when we couldn't even grow some of the stuff that are in their preps because we're so tropical down here. And uh, that's a, a Florigon mango that also had powdery mildew that's, you know, covered in fruit also. And flower, still has flower. Uh, this is a Malika mango that just started flowering and it's flowering on this side, but this side hasn't, but I'm sure it will. So it's got little fruitlets all over it also. This is a Namdak Mai tree that is covered in little fruits and had powdery mildew also, it still does, but it doesn't affect fruit set here. Uh, it does clean off the dead foliage like all this stuff. Uh, gets powdery mildew. You could see some powdery mildew right here, right there, right there. It will not damage that stem. Uh, it will hold the fruit uh, just much like here got powdery mildew on that stem that will not fall off sure some this mango will probably fall off because it's yellow and some of this fruit will probably fall off just because it doesn't hold five fruit per per droop but at least one will hold per stem so i'm not worried about this is a nandak mai tree that just started flowering uh it was a little behind the others but it's also in almost all shade here so we got lots of bananas. We grow, uh, we, I've divided 450 ice cream bananas, so we get pretty much bananas year round. Look at this mulberry tree while I'm here. This is a really good mulberry, uh, with big fruit. 
Uh, it's got huge leaves. This was a uh, cutting from my friend Frank's uh, tree. And I see that it's got a good fruit that's close enough. Birds wiped out all the fruit off of our, got big fruit on it. Mm, very good, super juicy. I mean, much better than world's best. Even the best world's best isn't as good as the fruit on that. This is a tree that the uh, creatures got. Here's a buttercream tree that's uh, doing a rebloom. It was so cold here and our mangoes started blooming in November. So it would, it was very, uh, not horribly cold, but it was like high thirties, low forties for like three nights in a row when the mangoes would bloom. So they're on their fourth bloom. They would bloom and then it would get cold for three days, three nights and rain, heavy rain. And then the blooms wouldn't set and then that rebloom and then it would do the same thing. Repeat. Here's that uh, sugarloaf tree that has, has fruit all over it and it's blooming on the part that didn't set fruit. So that's good. There's a little uh, sugarloaf tree that uh, is not reblooming yet, but I am fairly certain it will. This is that buttercream tree that is blooming. Very nice here. It's very gorgeous. We got to mow our lawn. It's, uh, I just haven't done it. I mean, our, our trails, I mow the paths. It's a big achachura tree that has uh, fruit all over it this year. Third year it's, is this the third year it's fruited or the, yeah, the third year. It's, a, it's the fourth year, I think. Anyway, third or fourth year. <sighs> Sorry. Okay, so here's a seedling Kwai Muk tree that has fruited before, but only produced one fruit. It was my oldest tree. It was a little tiny seedling like this big when I planted it here in the lawn and then kept using wood chips and didn't water. I didn't water anything. I don't water anything when I plant it. Uh, and it struggled for a long time. And uh, last year it got this sooty mold all late summer on its lower leaves but it's outgrowing it and none of the new leaves have it so hopefully it won't uh, get it any further than it has but it is starting to bloom and i'm looking for flowers but it doesn't do the huge bloom like my grafted tree does here there let's see uh, fruit flowers It's just starting, so maybe it's, I see big, I'm beginning to see little flowers, those little white dots right there. That's the flower starting. Hopefully it'll do a good bloom. So we've been growing uh, three types of cacao uh, from seed. So we grow the yellow rib, the Trinitoro, and the Criollo. And uh, the yellow ribbed is the fruit tree that we uh, are fruiting right now of the cacao. And it's a seed grown tree from a tree that I fruited in Brevard County. And uh, as I got better at figuring out how to grow cacao, I start them always in compost and I wait for the, the seedlings to get about four inches tall and I plant them in bulk in pots. I'll do a video on it in two days, I guess. Uh, I uh, wait, uh, they, I mix like 10 seeds per pot, little pots. And when they get about four inches tall, then I take them out and I remove the soil and rinse the roots in rainwater and then uh, direct sow them. So I did that with some Criollo cacao. And I'm trying to see one that I had over here. It's a coffee. But uh, here's one right here. I plant it in the winter. I don't follow rules. I plant in winter. I plant in summer. I just plant when I have seeds that are ready to go in the ground. And there's some other uh, cacao here. I see one right there. 
It's a Criollo cacao. Uh, it does just fine. That huge branch broke off. Landed on my uh, one of my citrus trees. So I have some, some other cacao through here uh, that are doing good. Right there. There's one right here. I see one right there. So we have about 100 that I've uh, started planting and they really like to be in uh, mostly shade and I plant them in the tall weeds uh, like this and this is like the end of winter so it's like really uh, this is the worst it's gonna look pretty much it's just now starting to come out of its uh, winter funk even though we really don't get a uh, a winter period here's a little uh, Aki I planted during the winter, uh, a little seedling Aki. I did a video of it. Probably in December I planted them, or January, something like that. Maybe it was February, who knows. I think it was January. So I'm gonna plant some more cacao. And I like to plant them in low places, because cacao can take, uh, standing water and it can take some drought here at florida type drought so two weeks or 30 days without rain no problem um, sometimes we've had droughts that have been longer than that but we do have moisture in the air at night and plants can get moisture uh through their leaves so they get moisture that way and they also get moisture from the fungal uh, hyphae that deliver water to the tree uh, in a symbiotic relationship with the rhizosphere of the plant. So uh, fungi can move uh, large quantities of water long distances. So uh, we focus on fungal dominance in the soil. So when I say low spot, you know, it's, it's all flat here, but around trees, the ground is higher up. So I could tell that this ground is higher up than say that that ground that was heavily compacted from being a lawn for 50 years so in between the two trees this tree is tall or higher up the ground that tree is higher up so this looks higher to me in fact i know it is so i plant in the low areas not areas that are known standing water areas but areas that can have uh standing water uh, for short periods of time is not an issue or I've seen cacao that takes standing water for uh, long periods of time, unlike uh, something like jackfruit. So they're very adaptable. And in the winter, they start looking um, haggard towards the end of winter. So here's that cacao and it's got this yellow leaf on it. That's what happens when you dry farm cacao in Florida. So I, that's the low spots. And uh, this probably is too high, but this is too sunny for me. Uh, maybe, because when you're dry farming, you have to think of the heat of the sun on the cacao. So uh, it does affect the trees. So I would definitely never plant any cacao in full sun like this. Um, here's, I'm just gonna look at the cherry of the Rio Grande. Look at, here's our peach cobbler mango that I clearly showed uh, powdery mildew all over it and has, quite a bit of fruit set on it everywhere, uh, which is nice, because I love peach cobbler. Here's that fruit punch that clearly had powdery mildew that has fruit set. It's a little tree. This tree in particular was affected by uh, fungal issues, and it seems to be trying to outgrow it. This is a uh, orange sherbet mango that has fruit. I clearly showed had powdery mildew on it. And now it's like got fruit all over it. Stuff like this will fall off. So, I mean, you could pick it off or whatever you want, but uh, this one will fall off. But the little spots that are on these, these mangoes, this one I'm sure is gonna stay on. But, um, what am I doing? Um, <laughs> destroying my mangoes. But those little spots that are on this mango, they will go away as the mango matures. So I don't even worry about stuff like that that people tend to worry about. And these mangoes all have fruit on them. This all summer has fruit all over it. 
big, bigger fruit and little fruit and lots of powdery mildew, so I might as well show it. So you can clearly see powdery mildew on this, this uh, all summer tree. And look at all the fruit on there. And look at that, all the fruit, the bigger fruits and little fruits and new blooms. And then this is a uh, orange sherbet mango that has fruit all over it. They scare people into uh, using like uh, foliar sprays that kill biology and uh, we need the biology on the leaf surface of the plant. So if you're using antimicrobials or antifungicides or fungicides rather, not antifungicides or uh, uh, fungicides like copper and sulfur, then you're destroying the the uh, the uh, biological homeostasis uh, on the leaf tissue that is needed. So the nitrogen fixing bacteria that's gonna enable your plant to overcome uh, a, a fungal pathogen is going to be, the, tr the plant is going to be affected by the antimicrobial you spray on its leaf tissue. <clears throat> I don't know everything, but I've learned quite a bit, uh, and I'm still learning. And uh, here's a uh, here's a, uh, a, a mulberry that has just got so much fruit on it that it's just insane. Look at this thing. This is the world's best cutting I did. They're okay. They're not nearly as good as that with that other large fruited variety. But they can get pretty big. They're just not as juicy. I'm gonna come here later and pick some. The birds will wipe a tree out very quickly. So I like to come and pick fruit every day. And look at all this fruit. These tree branches are hanging on the ground. So I also have this uh, black cherry of the Rio Grande over here. And I, I didn't realize that it had ripe fruit on it already, but uh, I don't think it has any that are totally black right yet. yet. But it definitely has lots of uh, little fruits that started. It's got fruits that are ripening. And it's got one, I used to think that this was the ripe fruit, but this is a, it turns black. I'm picking it anyway because I want to eat it. And it still has flowers. They're good fruits. I'm going to leave this other one on. Some are pretty big. And then some are just starting to turn black. It's got a lot of fruit on it this year, this tree. This tree last year, the mangoes were ripe when the fruit was ripe, so I just totally ignored it. But this year, I don't think our mangoes are gonna start ripening until July, the earliest ones, when normally we have mangoes by April, for sure, in the past. I'm working my way over to that cacao. I'm gonna look at a couple of other cacao, little cacao trees. So my mulberries, I just take cuttings and uh, I'm going to get these because this is a nice looking big fruit on this. Wasn't ready, ready, but they're so good. I love mulberries. I just take cuttings and put it in the ground. Sticks. Some make it, some don't. I don't really worry about it. I don't water them. The black sapotes are starting to flower. We still have black sapote fruit. So this tree I'm super excited about and I keep showing it in all my videos, but look at the size of the uh, Garcinia hombromiana fruit. Somebody wanna know if we have uh, seeds for sale of our Garcinia fruit. We fruit eight different species and uh, I don't save old seeds, so I try to sell it in fruit form. And generally the fruit is uh, uh, significantly less than the, uh, the price of the seeds that uh, the seed sellers charge. 
So last year I sold my MB fruit for $4 each and a lot of them had two seeds in it. So uh, I think if I have three trees that are fruiting this year of the MB, they're all uh, producing right now. So they should be ready soon. Then um, uh, I might be able to lower the price to $3 each, but I'm not sure yet. I wait until I see what our crop's going to be like and you never know. So... I don't even know what I'm going to sell the Garcinia hombromiana fruit for, the seashore mangosteen, but um, I've never seen it for sale, and I think the seeds are like five, six dollars, but I'm not sure. That was Garcinia gardneriana. This is Garcinia brasiliensis. The fruits on the Garcinias, you know, they're not a dessert. The, you know, like a big dessert fruit. They're not super sweet, but they're super medicinal. And it's a taste that you end up uh, liking. Probably the one I uh, think was the most underwhelming was the Garcinia madruno, the uh, Terichuelo. And this tree has fruit on it right now. Uh, little fruits. This, this tree uh, produces year round, and, or it has flowers, lots of flowers. See little fruits and flowers all over it. So I'm sure we'll get quite a, quite a bit of fruit this this time. And the fruits on this are always very large. The first uh, spring f uh, fruiting of it. It's a achachiro. We started this farm to be an achachiro farm. But we uh, grow so much more. We grow mangoes. We grow cacao. So. This is an area that I plant cacao in there. So this up here is like really high. So I would never plant a cacao way up high like that. I would plant it more down towards this low part. And that's what I did. Here's an achachiro tree. It's looking kind of good, big. They're starting to get big. Uh, we should have quite a few trees that uh, start up production within the next couple of years. Here's a, a Trinitoro cacao. These are all dry farmed. So this tree used to be in all shade, but this, this branch broke and this branch broke. And uh, I, so I've been trying to, I put bananas around it. Uh, one of my 450 ice cream bananas we started here. There's some others through here. I'm gonna work my way over to the, uh, I wish this blue lily pilly would uh, bloom and fruit. It's a syzygium, it's getting quite large. Uh, it's a male Garcinia hombromiana tree. This is that one with red, reddish flowers on, the, on it. Still flowering. They start off red, you can see red on the outside. There's, there's a male flower, the Garcinia hombromiana. Kind of looks like it's a female flower, but it's deceiving because most of the, uh, the Garcinias, the New World Garcinias, the fruit looks like that on the hermaphrodite, like African mangosteen or on the uh, monoecious uh, Brasiliensis or any of the other, the Achachiro, the New World mangosteens. But on the hombromiana, that's very misleading because the fruit starts uh doesn't look like that on the female flower. I I thought that was a female flower when I first start, saw it because of the it looked like it had fruit on it. But those male hombromiana trees have never produced any fruit. I'm hoping that the female uh unpollinated uh, Garcinia hombromiana fruit is monoecious. So it only produces uh, uh, monoecious female uh, trees. But I don't know yet, I'm, you know, I'm learning on everything. This is a uh, achachiro. We ha have them everywhere. It kind of what uh, binds the farm together, much like our mangoes, we have 200 and 70 grafted mango trees. This is a seedling uh, sugarloaf tree, mango tree. It has not produced fruit yet. Hopefully next year it will. Miko lemon, there's a, a, a 
a hermaphrodite uh, or a female uh, Garcinia Livingstonii that's got fruit all over it. Uh, there's an Ingus uh, Platonia insignis. It's looking good. So here's a little cacao in here. Here's a little uh, Criollo cacao, and here's a Trinitoro cacao. There's a Trinitoro cacao. Uh, there's a, a cacao right here I could see. There's some little tiny ones through here. There's also Achachiro in here. There's one there. There's one right here. There's a Garcinia dulcis here, and then I have a bunch of little Garcinias in here that I planted. Uh, Trinitoro, Trinitoro, there's a little yellow or a Criollo cacao right here. There's the Achachira, there's a Trinitoro over there. This is a, a place where I planted a lot of cacao and I also plant lots of mangosteens. So I plant uh, Garcinia mangostana, which is what this is, seed grown tree, it's quite large. And I just recently planted the Chirapu and it's gotten big already. Uh, I mean, it just was quick. The Garcinias are very... The Brazilian... Um, uh, Chirapu is what that is. Uh, they grow so quick here now. It's uh, obviously because we have so many different Garcinias growing here together that they, the microbes for the Garcinias have been built up in the soil and they recognize the Garcinias. And here's a... Garcinia Lindero. I plant them very close together. I want them to cross pollinate. Uh, and when they're close together, they cross pollinate. Here's a, a cacao right here. I think this is a, a, a Garcinia mangostana right here. It's either Mangostana or uh, right there. It looks like Mangostana uh, or Lindero, but it's, I'm fairly certain that one's uh, Mangostana. They were unaffected by the cold weather. I'm fairly certain that I can grow Mangostana here, uh, that we can grow Mangostana here. There's a Garcinia Dubico. Looks like a good one. We grow 18 different types of Garcinias and we fruit nine species so i have nine i still need to fruit but i think luke's and garcinia acuminata which is the sweet uh bumpy lemon the sweet madruno a lot of people call it madruno but it's not it's the garcinia acuminata at least as far as i can tell so here's a little cacao seedling uh criollo cacao looks great mm. I'm going to show you my pollinators. We have wild bees. So in this tree, we've had a wild bees beehive in there for several years. It's getting kind of big now. In fact, I can see wax or, you know, comb in it. I'll see if I can go over here and see it. Here's a, a hybrid Garcinia. It's like a sweet garden, Garneriana. Yeah, I can see the hive here. So, right in the center, right there. That's the honeycomb. It's in the morning, so the bees are kind of slow, but you can really see them in the afternoon. They just kind of, yeah, they're, they're starting to move in and out of there a little bit. You can slightly see them. It's taken a while for them to get that uh, wax built up. Right, a few years. It's an Achachira tree. This was a key lime, that seed, seed grown key lime that I thought was going to fruit this year, but it, uh, it hasn't. So I'm work, working my way over to that. Uh, that's a uh, seed grown fruiting cacao tree, the yellow rib cacao that, from fruit, a tree that I fruited uh, 
uh, a long time ago and planted the seeds here. This is a, a, a seed-grown soursop, a guanabana, that uh, never lost its leaves. So here's a, I was worried about this tree. So this is the African locust right here, this tree right here. And I was worried about it because it was looking kind of haggard towards the end of winter. But I see it has all new growth right here. That right there. It's supposed to be a very good fruit and highly medicinal. Uh, there's a achachiro. There's an achachiro. I have some little things in here. I planted, um, I forget what I planted in there, but it's... Oh, that thing, a cupia. Cupia bracteosa. And right here is the, uh, the uh, Puteria glabra, or Torta subspecies glabra. Is that it? Yes. And it's doing good. But this one I don't think has popped up, but it looks like some creature has dug a hole right there where the, the seed was put, um, of course. That's what they do. They will get your seeds. <clears throat> but what are you gonna do? I had two seeds, so it was a huge seed. Oh, is that it right there? That's it. I was like looking at this thinking it was cow manure, but this is it. See, some creature was trying to eat it. I planted it deep, too. I'm going to put it back in the ground. And put it back in there. It must have been good. That's why I'm uh, glad I checked. <laughs> Uh, huge seed, huh? Um, looked like it was okay. Maybe it'll help it by cracking that outer shell on it. Um, I don't know, but they say it has a low, uh, uh, for, uh, germination rate, which I only had two seeds that are very expensive. So hopefully one will <clears throat> make it. So that's why I want to test picking this uh, cacao because so, I was dreaming of it last night and uh, I know that in the past that uh, the creatures have attacked the cacao so I want to pick it a little early and this is it right here and uh, it's just starting to change color but see all the scratches on it so you know they're interested in it because it didn't have the scratches before I see little teeth marks so I don't want to wait until it is totally ripened. This one obviously is going to fall off, um, but it has all this other fruit on it, some higher up. So whatever's getting it is down low, and I'm just going to pick it, and that could have been why it was changing color, but I can see that they're going to get it if I don't pick it. So I'm going to experiment on this fruit and see if it will ripen up a little bit. I'm sure the seeds are viable at this point. I'll find out. I'm going to plant them in two days. Normally, I would like to wait until the fruit got yellow, but look at all the bite marks on this fruit. So they were uh, attacking it, and I don't want them uh, to eat it, but this tree has fruit all, the, all over it. For such a little tiny tree, dry farm tree. And normally in the, at the end of winter, the cacao will uh, drop almost all of its leaves and just have these new uh, leaves coming out especially if it hadn't rained like it does here in the winter it doesn't rain a lot this was a little exceptionally cool uh wet winter um abnormal winter so that's why it has all these leaves on it but it will drop all almost all its leaves during drought in the winter and i've never had to worry about it though it doesn't die back even in our severe drought we had back to back to uh summers ago or not last last summer and uh no last winter and the summer summer before so uh it was just the worst uh dry period during the summer and it still never 
affected the tree, though it did not produce fruit last year, and I believe that was because of the winter drought or the summer drought we had. It just affected it. So I'm going to use this fruit. I'm going to set it on the counter in the house and see if it turns a little yellow. Because I don't know. I, you know, I'm not a cacao farmer. I just am learning, just like most of y'all, and. Uh, see if it ripens and see if I can get the fruit to germinate if I pick it green like this. So I like to experiment. I do have, a, uh, you know, quite a bit of fruit to, uh, to play around with. So rather than let this get completely eaten by the creatures, which is probably what would happen uh, once it turned more yellow, uh, then I'd rather just you, you experiment myself. <laughs> So we have a lot of little cacao in here. There's one right here. Uh, I got durian in here that did good. Didn't seem to mind the winter. That one I actually just recently planted, so it was already past the winter. Uh, this one, the, the creatures got my oldest durian. It was right here, and they just recently ate it. I could see it's all dried up there. Uh, yeah, the arrow rabbits will attack certain trees uh, if they're not protected, but I have some others that they didn't get and they're doing really good. And I have lots of little cacao in here. Criollo cacao. And here's a durian that uh, survived the winter just fine. And it's got all new growth on it. So that's all new growth right here. And the leaves, the winter leaves look a little haggard, but it wasn't like the breadnut tree that completely uh, succumbed to uh, 40 degrees. Uh, it just couldn't deal with it. Even in an area like this. Here's the Pulusan tree. It never got affected. In fact, it sent out new growth uh, during the winter. So I know that it can take our winters here. Sure, maybe 31 degrees might affect it, but I'm talking Fahrenheit, but uh, I, I don't see that a, a reason. They just don't seem like they're going to be an issue, the durian or the pulison or the keppel tree or the mangosteen, the mangostana. I mean, they used to say you couldn't even grow organic here, so they were wrong about that. So... They're probably wrong about how cold some of these uh, tropicals. They're wrong about the cacao. Cacao, this cacao produced fruit at 31 degrees. Didn't drop any of the fruit, so uh, without any protection. I don't protect my trees. I just build the biology up in the soil. This is a cacao. This uh, Plinia kambuka is doing good. Plinia edulis. Uh, another tree that is doing good that's ultra tropical is the keppel tree and it's right here no problem none so i i uh, have been experimenting with ultra tropicals and meringue is one of them that i have i've experimented with i'm going to set these things here and uh, this is a, I'm pretty sure it's either a meringue or a lancifolius, the articarpus, but I think it's a meringue, but it's kind of looking like it could be lancifolius. It was either that or a meringue, but it, uh, I'm pretty sure it's meringue, but it looks great. Seed grown, <clears throat> uh, new leaves in the winter. So I think that that is not as cold sensitive as they say. And uh, this is a petali tree, and I bought this as a little seed seed grown tree. The meringue was a seedling tree, so this is a petali tree that I bought. Uh, it was kind of expensive, little tiny tree, and I I remove all soil from my uh, seed, plant trees that I plant. So I plant all trees bare root. I rinse them because they're mostly colonized by microplastics around their uh, root zone. And uh, uh, the biology in the uh, potting mix isn't going to be the same as the biology in the natural soil. So uh, by planting bare root directly in the soil, it's guaranteed that all my plants that I planted that way have, have thrived. 
being dry farmed because I don't water them when I plant them, even during drought. I haven't had to. We have been building our soil up and focusing on soil health. So that's why we're having such success with cacao and other tropicals because the uh, biology is what uh, uh, enables the plant to handle abiotic and biotic stress. It's, it's an immune system. So this petal eye tree, this leaf came yellow like that, but that's a new leaf right there on it. And I see a little, uh, a little, uh, Garcinia lindero right there. And right next to it, I see is a cacao. So I don't want to step on anyone, but I see a little cacao right here. That's a Criollo cacao. So I have everything kind of tucked in everywhere. Uh, I'm going to look at the bread, uh, bread nut tree. Uh, and all of our bread nuts I direct sowed 40 seeds. They just did not like cold. So I would say that there's a little cacao here. I'm growing with my rare aeroids, my anthuriums, my philodendrons, anthuriums. <clears throat> Even hard to grow uh, philodendrons like the luxurians seem to thrive being grown naturally. So all the bread nuts that made it through the winter, there was only four that made it through the winter. They all looked horrible. And I only think we have one that looks like it might make it out of 40. But granted, the rabbits got at least 30 percent. Nah, not 30. But this tree doesn't look like it's going to make it. The rabbits got... I don't know, they got 80% of them. They just really liked it, like they liked that durian. And uh, I'm trying to think where that other bread nut tree is that I saw had a leaf on it, because it wasn't over there, maybe that was it. Maybe it, it did die there. Um, and I just couldn't remember where it was. If I find it, I'll show it in the video in two days that I make. I took a few days off. I felt like I was just, uh, I don't know, busy I guess is what it was. I get busy when the fruit starts coming and we got baby calves, so. <clears throat> anyway, that's it. I'm Eric. This is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm and that's a cacao update. Uh, two days I'll do a video on uh, how I grow the start the cacao from seed and uh, hopefully they'll show that they you can harvest them a little green um, like I did here because of the creatures attacking the fruit uh, it is a problem but I like the creatures so much and once we have like a hundred trees producing of cacao it won't be uh, a problem so I just have to grow more cacao so we have 200, so it definitely won't be a problem. Anyway, have an excellent day. Please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy this content. Leave a comment. I love hearing from you. Thanks for watching.